This is Man Made Mead. Today, uh, we're doing something a little different. I wanted to talk about all the meads I've made so far. And um, this is not, this is the stuff I've bottled, I should say. Um, there are plenty that I have not um, bottled yet. And they're just kind of sitting in carboys, aging, doing that whole thing. But I want to talk about the ones that have been bottled. So I've got some ones that are older. I've got some ones that are newer. My oldest one currently here is this traditional orange blossom or this pear mead. And they are both uh, roughly a year and nine months old, something around that. Getting close to two years old. So um, these other ones, uh, some are very current. I've got my most current bottled one right here. And then I've also got a bunch that are, um, of course, kind of in between that range. But without me having to go too in deep in depth with each one, because uh, I think that would take a long, long time to describe them. Let me show you kind of what I've got. And uh, you're welcome to look at the list, comprehensive list of all my meads I've made so far down below. And that's in the uh, in the description, there's a little Google Doc link. If you click on that, that will take you to my kind of my, my document format that I use um, that tells me what I'm doing with each mead, my step-by-step -step process, original gravity, final gravity, all of that. Check that out and you can find out the ones that I have currently going on um, that are not here, uh, but also what's happening with these. Let's just go ahead and break them down into the oldest section. So I have starting here, this is an orange blossom mead and uh, I will for like the the ones that have better labels this one I don't have a printed nice label for it unfortunately um, just because I didn't end up making it it was one of my first ones and so it's got a little uh, just kind of paper label on it yeah this is traditional orange blossom it was made on 8 14 17 so we're getting close it's pretty old itself it's one of my first ones the next oldest ones a pear mead um, a traditional, of course, as you might know, is a mead that is just honey and water and yeast. Pear mead. Um, it had I put pears in it. It turned out pretty good too. Here's another traditional, traditional uh, hover. Oh goodness gracious, clover honey. These are in different bottles because at the time when I was bottling, I was not really using beer bottles. I wanted to go the route of uh, these 375 milliliter uh, wine bottles, and so that's kind of what we have here. So two traditionals a peach, then here's a cherry. This cherry, I had a 187 of, a little tiny bottle of it. I tried it the other day, incredible. Really, really good. I'm gonna do another, um, I'm gonna try it again on camera because it was it was so good. I, Man, I'm very excited for it. And then, next we have another old one. Uh, this one's 92917 when I first made it. It's the pumpkin mead, um, if anyone remembers that one. It is, I've got a bunch of bottles of it. I've got a couple wine bottles of it as well. That's the big thing with these, uh, all of these really. Some of them I have made a bunch of, and meaning I have 40 plus bottles. Others, I only have three or four of. For example, my cherry one here, I've only got like two more bottles of it in existence. So I'm sitting on them pretty well currently. Uh, then another one I have a bunch of bottles of is the mango mead, and this one is, uh, I could do a whole video about it. I'll probably do a, a mead review and tell you my opinion of the, me the mango and what I would do differently because it was uh, a, little bit, a little bit interesting. So these are all the 375 milliliters, um, pretty old ones, back all the way in 2017 when I, when I was doing video stuff at first. So. Um, now I'm going to move these to the side and we're going to make way for the others. So I have a, a couple more that are just poor labeled ones that I don't have my labels finished for. For this, this for example, is a blood orange mead. Uh, I only had about a gallon, about two gallons of it because I have two versions. I've got a blood orange, just normal, and it's got a little paper label and then then there's also a blood orange that I dry hopped. And so these were very good. I've, of course, bottled them clearly um, and they are aging and hopefully getting better with taste. Again, look down below if you want to know what's in those specifically, if you want to try and copy it. So now we're going to look at my older ones, um, not older, but my newer ones that have been properly labeled. And uh, 
this is a, a good example. This is one, this is a clover traditional that I have properly labeled. I'll put all the uh, photos here so you can see it close. Um, they, the process or the, the artwork description, what I'll say is, as I was trying to figure out what man-made mead was and how I wanted the labels to look, I was thinking sign language is great, architecture was great, um, and then anything with just a person or body part, something on it. So in this case, I, of course, I'm using sign language, and it's, it's not the letter C for this. However, I think it, it's doing the job right now. Also, this is not a big one. Like I was saying um, a little bit ago, I did not make um, a million bottles of, like this one, this is only probably six bottles in total. It was a very small batch. Next is a Tupelo traditional. Again, I'll show you a picture of it. This one has different kind of artwork, um, and it's still the man-made mead idea. This is Tupelo honey, and it's my first ever experiment with Tupelo honey. Very interesting kind of honey for one. Um, smoky, sweet, very uh, more liquidy. It's not very thick, not very like molasses, which is interesting, but um, I would definitely want to try more Tupelo honey meads. And continuing on, we have just a straight up orange mead. This one is um, 2018 as well, and it is, um, it's a pretty hefty mead. This one's got, this guy's 18%. Uh, it was interesting to make this one. I was kind of excited to try it. Um, and I was very inspired by my, where is it? Lemon and lime mead right here. This is my lemon and lime that was my, uh, Giant test of December 2017. Um, what I'd done then was basically throw a bunch of lemons and limes into a traditional mead and kind of hope for the best. And it was atrocious. That's the beginning because it was so tart and I was afraid it was not going to get better. But age does help um, meads temper down certain flavors. It also kind of brings out other flav flavors, so you should um, just kind of know that as you're making your meads that some things will change over time. But the lemon and lime mead was really good after some time, and so I wanted to try to make an orange mead, and this guy is also very good. Um, next, we are going to move on to, I think in my, I'm trying to go timeline-wise too. A long time ago, I made an apple cinnamon mead, and I don't have a, um, uh, I, ha I have a bottle of it somewhere that is like paper labeled, but I decided to just include my other version two that I made. This is an apple cinnamon mead, um, and it is probably one of my favorite meads I've ever made. It's just an easy drink, really, really good. Uh, if you want to check out the recipe down below, of course you can do that, and uh, I would I would encourage you to try that. But I I really liked it. Then that takes us to just a straight up boche, um, and boche is where you caramelize, burn honey a little bit, and it's this is my first version of it. Um, the first time I tried it in February of 2018, so uh, I had had some more mead experience, making experience, wanted to try something new. This is where I kind of fell into making bochets and decided, man, this is a lot of fun. I want to keep trying to make more and more of them because they are a really good kind of mead, which prompted my next bochet that I'll talk about here in a second. Then we have, switching gears, we have a blueberry and vanilla mead. Uh, this guy is also very, very good. I did make a lot of bottles, or quite a few of this, and um, I made three versions of it. I made a dry, semi-sweet, sweet, by back sweetening in the end, I should say. So this is also very good. Blueberry and vanilla do go together, and I'm sure they have other flavor profiles that you could put with the blueberry that are just as good. Taking me to, in my timeline, uh, the strawberry and, strawberry and banana mead. This was also a very experimental one, um, a traditional mead, plus a bunch of strawberries and actual banana thrown into it. And uh, it uh, is very definitely fruity. Um, the, the flavors are muted. I haven't tried it in a little while, so maybe they've came out over time. I don't really know. Um, but I do know that it was, it was pretty good. Okay, we're down to our last four. Um, and the timeline 
I made two peppermint kinds of meads. This is my newest one. My oldest one I made back in November of 20... When was that? Was it November? I'm not sure exactly what, what month it was, but it was a monthly mead. I made um, a peppermint mead with a bunch of candy canes and honey, mixed it all together, and it turned out really great, and so I decided to make another one. So this is my version two, <clears throat> and it has its own label, of course, as you can see. Uh, it is very, very good. Another one of my recipes that I think people have tried and liked as well, so if you wanna make that, check out that link below, um, and you will, you will be able to try it yourself. Last three, I have the OK Boche. It's another um, Boche, which is the caramelized honey, but I wanted to do something different, so I put vanilla beans, and I put cacao or cocoa nibs in, um, and that added the chocolate and vanilla side of things. So it's a chocolate and vanilla Boche. Really, really good. I've got a bunch of it. Um, I'm letting, kind of like letting it age for some time because I think it will help it um, mature for one, but also bring out like the chocolate flavor, vanilla flavor will start to pop out some more over time. And um, I mean, just time makes mead better. Makes a bad mead better, makes a good mead better as well. Last two. First, these are my two braggots I've made um, so far. And a braggot is a beer in a mead mixture. So this is where I started to change my um, art style. I, I had some other options as well. So this Blackberry Braggot is using the letter B for sign language. And um, it is a, a American pale beer mixed with some honey and then I put blackberries in. And it is also very, very good. Um, my first beer I've ever made, well, no, sorry, first Braggot I've ever made. I've made beer before but my first braggot. And finally, the most recent, to this day at least, that I've bottled um, is what I'm calling Mima's Special Stout. And this right here is uh, a oatmeal raisin cookie stout. Now, I am, you can call this one a braggot because I have put honey in it, in it to try to sweeten it, to add some more gravity to it ultimately, but I'm not classifying it as a beer. Uh, excuse me, as a braggot. I'm classifying it as a beer, more specifically, because I didn't put enough honey in it to really change it that much. So, which is uh, totally fine. So this is, I have a whole video series about this one specifically, if you wanna go check that out. Um, it is currently carbonating, so I have not tried it since I've bottled it, because I'm hoping that the priming sugar is working its way in and carbonating it so that it becomes that carbonated beer. But I really like the style, art style of this one. As you can see uh, right next to me, it's, it's a little different, but um, it's also very, very interesting, very cool. So this is the stuff I have bottled so far, and I have more, I have more to finish in the future. I've got a Joe's Ancient Orange Mead, I've got two pineapple meads, um, I've got a raspberry boche, I've got two different normal boches that are kind of different because of air. Uh, what else do I have? I've got a pear mead. Um, I'm currently working on a, uh, a watermelon mead as well, a traditional. I've got one that's called the experiment. Um, what else? I've got a white chocolate, white chocolate and cherry mead that's going as well. Um, I have a wine that I've bottled that I haven't shown here because I'm more talking about the meads world right now. But this is a great, great example of all the stuff I've made and I hope to continue to make more mead. And I'm highly inspired by you guys, highly inspired by uh, reading other people's um, ideas and what you guys kind of say to me as well. Making mead is really, really fun. It's a challenge because it's got its own difficulties, just like beer, just like wine, just like every other liquor that's ever made. Um, but if you want to get into it, of course, I would say just go for it. Buy your honey, your water, your yeast, put it together in whatever other flavors you want, really. Let it go, and you will be surprised how quickly um, you might end up with more and more meads. So you might end up like me with just a ton and which is kind of fun. So I appreciate you watching. If you want to check out, like I said, that list of all of my meads currently going and, or 
uh, even ones I haven't, you haven't seen here, or if you're inspired by one of these, let me know and, and you can follow the recipe. And I'd love to hear from you what you think of it. So uh, tell me about your meads down below. This is not meant to be a channel that is completely about me, but instead about mead making with all of us. So um, I highly appreciate you guys um, watching this video and helping support me in that realm. One way you can really support me is by subscribing to see uh, more content when it comes out, but also there's a bell next to that subscribe button that notifies you when I upload and that seems like it'd be annoying, but um, YouTube actually doesn't push videos all the time. Some days they, the videos get lost in a sub box and so it's hard to know when I do upload. So if you want to help me out, go ahead and click that uh, and that will tell you when. You can also check out the links below. There's a Facebook community called facebook.com or facebook.com slash manmade meadery. There's a Patreon where you can support me directly and help me continue to make more videos, update things um, to where I can make better just content in general. Um, there's a PO box where you can send me things, letters, anything like that. Um, and then there's a merchandise store. There's a lot of stuff down below, but uh, I, I definitely need you guys' help because this is a fun hobby, but of course with every hobby comes expense and um, I want to be able to make better content for you guys because you deserve better content. So thanks for watching um, and listening to all of this. This has been a lot of fun. I can't wait to do this hopefully a year from now again and have even more uh, stuff to show, to display from what I've done uh, because mead making is a blast and I hope you will get involved if you're not already involved. So uh, I will see you guys next time and cheers. <laughs>